Hello and welcome to today's penultimate webinar on managing trust officially in CAS 360 as part of our education week. My name is Peter DeStefano and I'm an account manager here at BGL. A couple of housekeeping uh, points uh, to touch on before we commence. Uh, for any questions today, please place those into the Q&A panel uh, down below on your screen. Uh, to ask any questions. Uh, today I have with me Andre, Daniel and Chris from our training and documentation team and they will be attending to your questions today. Uh, in addition, we will be recording today's webinar and sending this out by email to any registrants and attendees. Uh, for anyone that hasn't, uh, you can certainly access the webinar via our BGL YouTube channel in conjunction with our other content in the chat panel, you'll also find a link to our last webinar that we'll conduct later today, um, as well as a link to the YouTube channel. So as we can see, uh, we've already covered eight topics this week. Uh, today I'll be covering managing trust efficiently, and later today we'll be touching on enhancing compliance with BGL Smart Docs. Finally, um, in the last three weeks, we've covered uh, a multitude of topics across all our products uh, to locate those webinars for Simple Fund 360, Simple Invest 360, and CAS 360. These can be found on the Education Week website, as well as on the YouTube channel. In addition, for any New Zealand clients who are utilizing CAS 360, next week we'll be conducting a CAS 360 mm -hmm. education week specifically for our New Zealand clients. Now let's get into managing trusts. So to begin with, I have logged into CAS 360. You'll be greeted by the uh, company selection screen. What you'll find is on the left-hand side of the panel, uh, is the trust module. And as you select it, this will open up uh, the trust register for you. Now, there are four types of trusts that you can process through CAS 360. We have unit trusts, discretionary trusts, hybrid trusts, and bear trusts. In order to set these up in CAS 360, you can do this one of three ways. Uh, the first is to do this manually through adding a trust. So to do so, you simply select add trust, add new trust, and you go through the relevant prompts to create your trust. And then you simply save it. The second way to do it is through a provider. So you can do this directly through the register via provider button uh, up the top here, which will lead you to ClearDocs, which is the provider uh, of choice. Moreover, you can actually do this through one of your legal document providers. So for instance, uh, BGL integrates with several providers such as ACIS, ClearDocs, NTAA. Um, you can check these out either via your account manager or you can actually go into the Knowledge Center and look at a list of our legal document providers. If you were to use one of those providers, you'd be able to form a trust uh, and then push the information via the integration into your trust screen. The final way to import data into CAS 360 is to actually download it via our import template on the left-hand side. What you can do is download the template and then what you'll be greeted with is the following document. Now, this is a really good way to bring in your uh, trusts in bulk. Um, and what you can do is we have set out um, some instructions on the page in front of me uh, that will mark out what is required as part of the bulk import. So I will go through this in detail with you um, as um, there are some fields in there that are often overlooked. And so I want to um, focus on these points today. So the first tab uh, is the trust tab. So as we can see, um, we have some red writing up the top, which are the mandatory fields. Um, we have some secondary fields, which can be filled in 
to fill in the data. So first and foremost, we select the jurisdiction that you might be in. So in this case, Australia, the trust type, in this case, I've selected unit and the trust form date, which is very important. Now, with the trust form date, if for whatever reason, the date is not clear or you're unsure, you don't have the requisite information, you can add in dummy data. So in this case, I have done that and just put in the first of the first 1900 as to be able to form the trust. And I can show you later how you can edit this in CAS 360. Moreover, we have the address line, so we can add in uh, the address, the town, city or suburb, the state, the postcode and the country. And I've done this for both a unit and a discretionary trust. The next step is to select trust beneficiaries for our discretionary trust. So I've input a name, an individual, company or other entity based on the type, who the beneficiary is. So in this case, myself, my address, suburb, state, postcode, and country. And again, the commencement date is important to have. Again, I've put in a dummy data spot here. Uh, if you have the correct date, please insert that. The next tab is the trust unit holders, which is a little bit more in depth. So again, you can input the trust name, you select the individual, add in the name, the address. In this case, you can add in a beneficial owner. So in this case, I've selected a company from the list and added in the name of that company, the address line for that company, as it is the beneficial owner. As we go across the screen, I've completed the address. Now under the unit type, under description, this pertains to the share class. So you can add that in, which I have, the amount paid for that unit. Now it's important to also add in if there is no unpaid amount to put in the number zero as to suggest that it has been unpaid and the number of units, which is 10 in this case. The final part of the trust import spreadsheet is the relationships. So again, for both the trust that I'm trying to set up, I have put in the trustee, who the individual is, the name and the address. Finally, as I mentioned, the date appointed is also important um, as if this is not filled in, the trust import will not be successful. Now, once we've filled in the trust spreadsheet and we're happy with everything, the next question is how do we import the data in? So you can do this one of two ways. The first way is to contact your account manager and send through the trust import spreadsheet, which they can refer to the product team. The other way you can do it is actually through support. So I will show you that. You simply click the support call button up in the top right. You can put in the words trust import spreadsheet. Select log a support call. You add in all your details and you can drag and drop the file straight into the drop down. Once that's done, the support team will then pass this on to the product team and upload the data into your system. So once the data is in our system, we obviously want to be able to uh, produce you know, unit hold changes, uh, distribution statements and the like. So what I'll do is I'll start off with the unit trust that I've uploaded into the system already. So as you can see, the date formed, Now, if I wanna change this, I certainly can. So if, that, if I know that the date now is from the year 2000, I simply can make that amendment and save it. The other details screen just allows you to be able to import further information with regards to the trust, um, which can also be uh, found in the report screen and the tax details as well. So once you input this information, um, you can download a report that will have all this information for you. The relationships, which were brought in as part of the import, which was myself, 
um, and I can find that information by going to the contact. The next screen is the unit holder screen. So this is probably the main screen. Uh, for those who are familiar with the shareholder screen, you'll notice that it is very similar in terms of its uh, formation. Um, you can see the unit holders up here and the amounts uh, with the donut on the left-hand side. In this case, we can see um, the unit holder and with the beneficiary that I'd created for the corporate trustee. If I wanted to add a transaction in the same way uh, that I can do in the shareholder screen, um, I can do an allotment and it follows the same process. And so now I have successfully um, added some more units. In addition, you can ask also um, add in some events and record different types of events. So if I select the event button, you can actually add different types of events. So for instance, if the trust has an asset acquisition, so we'll say real estate, and the values at 5 million, and I can save it. And this acts as a register for all those events. Once I've performed those transactions, I can then go ahead and prepare the forms. So what you'll see here in the document production screen is you can attach the cover letter. We have the trustee minutes and resolution. We have the unit holders minutes and resolution, the unit certificate and the application of shares. What that looks like for the trustee minutes. is the following document. And all these documents are fully customizable um, as described in one of our earlier webinars. And also we have the unit certificate. In addition to these documents, you can also produce distribution statements. To do so, you simply select the distributions button up the top here and you add distribution. In this case, we wanna add the unit type, the distribution amount. the tax rate, distribution type, and the payment, and then we save and prepare documents. This takes us to another screen, again, a document production screen, so we can toggle on the cover letter, and the two key points here are the distribution statement and the resolution. The statement looks as follows. Again, this document can be customized to your liking. And for the resolution, Again, the document can be customized and can be signed. So that is how, well, they're all the relevant steps with regards to importing your data and then processing um, your unit holder transactions and your distribution statements for a unit holder trust. I'm now going to go through a discretionary trust which is also very similar in terms of the processing. So as you can see, we have the trust details screen. The other details is also the same and the tax details. We have the relationship screen for the trustee and the beneficiaries instead of the unit holders. So what you can see here is this screen is quite different to the unit holder screen. Now to add a beneficiary, um, you simply can select the green button up the top to add a beneficiary. So let's say I've added Beatrice as a beneficiary. 
Um, if there's any trust events, this operates in the same way with the unit holdings. And I simply prepare forms. And I produce the trustee minutes and a register of the beneficiaries. You can also produce the distribution statement for your, uh, your discretionary trusts. Again, you simply select distributions and you wanna add a distribution. Now, what you'll notice here is that this screen is quite different to the unit holder screen. What we have up the top are the different tax components. So we have frank dividends, unfrank dividends, gross interest and other income. This is the default um, overlay. You can actually amend this uh, to however you like. You can simply remove uh, any of the tax components by selecting the bin icon. And you can add them by selecting this plus button up in the top right. So should there be anything you'd like to add, you can certainly do so. In addition, with the input of the figures and data, this can be done in one of three ways. You can do this by dollar amount. You can do this by percentage, or you can do this by free text. So I can add in $50, Beatrice, and yet change it to be $50 in writing. So you have flexibility with the way you want to represent your data. So for the purposes of this, I'll just fill in the data. You can also add various currencies. So we obviously have Australian dollar and we have a listing of all the other currencies. And then finally the date declared. Once this is completed, we simply save and prepare. And once again, we're greeted with the document production screen. What we can do is then add the cover letter. Again, we have the distribution statement. So we have that for both Beatrice and for Peter. And we can also produce the resolution. Again, all these documents are customizable. Now, in addition to unit and discretionary, they are the main trust types primarily used. Um, we also do have um, hybrid and bear. So I will touch on those briefly for you as well. So with the bear trust, the setup is the same. We do have the other detail screen, the tax detail screen, any relationships that have been formed and the beneficiary screen, which is similar to that of the discretionary trust. With the hybrid trust, this is a little bit different uh, as we know. So when I select the hybrid trust, we have all the same preliminary details and information, but what you'll know or see up the top here is that you actually have both the beneficiary screen and the unit holder screen. So the unit, uh, the beneficiary screen acts in the same way as the bear and discretionary trust. Simply place the information to set up the beneficiary. For the unit holders, I simply would add a transaction. And now I've processed that transaction. 
A couple of final points. Up the top of each screen, we have this options drop down. So should you require a historical register or a current register, this can also be downloaded. The forms that are prepared can all be prepared via download to be sent out to clients or can be digitally signed as per the company documents. And the final um, interesting point with regards to trust is the ability to actually set up document reminders. So in the automated reminder screen, you can select document reminder. You will select other reminders as this is not related to ASIC. You select the jurisdiction. And then you can select how many reminders you'd like to set out for your clients with regards to the trusts. As there is no ASIC deadline or timeline on this, you can set these out as required. So you have up to six reminders and you simply can apply that to all your, all your clients. and save it and your reminders are set. So that concludes managing trust here in CAS 360. We do have a little bit of time uh, before our, a, a lot of time is completed. So if you have any more questions, please put them through to the Q&A panel. Um, the boys will keep answering your questions and Thank you very much for your time today.